Is the Weeble S a good gimbal for this year, 2021? I've had my Weeble S now for two years and it has been everywhere with me and it has survived quite well. I've slung it around my shoulder on a shoulder strap, I've tossed it into bags, I've stuffed it into small corners, you stood it on the table and I thought it was time after two years use of it to bring you the good and the bad of the Weeble S so you can decide if it is a suitable gimbal for you. Now a note on the weight that I've been carrying on it, I've been using the A7R3 with a 16 to 35 f4 lens, um, a microphone and nothing else. So that's been putting a carry weight of about 1.4 kilos on the gimbal, which is about 2.6 pounds. And it has worked perfectly with that weight. So that's a full frame camera with a nice moderate size zoom lens on it. Now, let's start down the list. First, form factor. This was a big selling point and a big advertising point for the Weeble S when it first came and the lab that came out before it, in that it was a new radical design of gimbals. And yes, I'd have to say it is. It's compact and light, it folds really nice, it stores away nicely, um, and the transition between like um, held upright down to a sling mode can work really smoothly with if you put the two tripods on for the dual handle works really well so yes is more compact is lighter to hold during the day which is great and does do that suitcase or underslung mode very well but I'd have to say a lot of people you know when they first got it and they say oh yes it's so much smaller it tucks away in any corner but it is actually quite an awkward shape it is lighter but when you actually fold it, it looks like this. And that doesn't actually fit in to a lot of camera bags as neatly as a gimbal. Okay, you don't have to disassemble it as much, but you still have to take the handle off the bottom, like you would with an upright gimbal. And then it's, yeah. So I'm, I'm in two ways on it. I've got used to it, um, this comp, the, the Weeble S shape, but it is not as convenient as you first think about tucking into bags, especially a camera bag. I sit with a low pro uh, tactic camera bag and I used to be able to put the camera on my gimbal and put the gimbal in uh, and to be able to pull it out in and out the top quite easily so if I was on a motorbike or in transit I could put it in but I could pull it out and deploy it really quickly. On the With the Weeble S I had to rearrange the bag and it really doesn't quite fit conveniently because the upper area where the camera goes is too small for the the whole of the, ca uh, the gimbal this way. So it's got its pros and its cons. It is light. Also, because it's quite small, the lower handle, when you take the tripod off, has all the controls on, which doesn't work as well, because you, you knock all the controls all the time. Yes, you can lock them, but if you're on the go, run and gun, or travel photography like, uh, videography like I do, you don't want to have to, oh, double click that button to lock them, and then you want something to work on it, you have to double unclick it, and then use the joystick and the uh, and change the settings or change mode. So, it has a good form factor, but there's one or two things that are a little inconvenient, especially if you've got big hands. Um, you can put the tripod at the bottom and hold it there, so you've got the controls clear, but then of course you've created more leverage, which means less stability. And of course the gimbal is all about getting nice stable footage. So, it is a revolutionary design, it has some good things, and it has some downsides. You just have to adapt to using it. Gimbal use. It is a great gimbal to use, easy to balance, friendly to use, lightweight, but with strong motors, and it functions very well. As a first gimbal, it's a great choice. You can get it set up and operating quickly, and it is quite intuitive with its controls. As with all equipment, the more you learn and handle it, how to control it, the better it will perform. The Weeble S has plenty custom settings as well, so you can tweak the strength of the motors, the speed of the turns, uh, to suit your videography needs. So it's a gimbal you shouldn't outgrow either. Construction. The construction of the Weeble S is, I'd have to say, a little bit meh. It's not an expensive top-of-the-line pro product, so a lot of it is made of plastic, and through the two years, 
it's continued working, but I've had one or two niggles and problems with it. Specifically the locks on the arms. One of them doesn't work, one of them works half the time. A few of the wheels and the, and the triggers have become a little loose. Um, so I'd say it's not a long-term durability product. It's not going to last a year and years. It is going to wear and things are going to get knocked. Having said that, the motors and the mechanics of it have always worked perfectly. So that's not such a bad thing. So construction-wise, it's okay, but not brilliant. But mechanically, has performed admirably. Next, the locks the locking arms on the mechanism. Now this is a great feature to have on any gimbal. It makes setting up the gimbal so much easier and also for transport and storage is really good. I have to say the locks on the Weeble S though unfortunately are not quite up to standard. Um, as I mentioned in a previous um, on the construction side the the locks just don't work and I've had one or two seen online one or two other people who have the same issue is the locks either slip off or they don't work at all. So unfortunately I have to say it's a great idea works well when they work but the ones on the Weeble S are not quite up to standard. Price. Now you'd have to say that for a gimbal with the payload that it can carry and all the things it can do the Weeble S offers good value for money. It's come down in price since it was first launched. It's now a two year old product. There's been new products come on the market that are very similar to it, do all the same things. But I would say in value for money, for what you get and the payload and what it can do, I would say the Weeble S is good value for money. The grip handle how you carry the gimbal. This is one of the most important things in conjunction with stability, how the thing handles, how you hold it. Now, as standard, it comes with a little clip release tripod at the bottom, which can be moved into the secondary position for underslung mode. And with that one handle, you uh, can hold it with two hands and then you can use your thumb or your fingers to control the things. But if you want the trigger, you have to put your hand further up the handle where the controls are. Now I mentioned this in the form factor as well. Um, you can then knock the controls. Now you can obviously lock the controls with double clicking a button, but then if you're moving and you want to change something, as you're moving and still film, you have to unclick, not knock any buttons, and move it. So there is a little bit of limitations on there. The handle itself is quite comfy. I've never slipped on it or anything. The trigger works quite well. Um, once you've learnt it, all the buttons are quite conveniently placed, but they are going to be under your hand if you're holding onto that top thing. So you do have to adapt how you hold it. And I would say it's not the most convenient place to have all the buttons, especially on the front, because a lot of them were facing you, and that's where this part of your hand go, where you tend to carry quite a bit of the weight of the gimbal. So, hmm, I'm on the fence on there. I've adapted to it, but I have lost a few shots where suddenly I've just squeezed it too tight, or I've wanted to think, and suddenly the camera's been wandering off, and of course I've lost a shot because the camera's wandering in the wrong direction instead of where I'm pointing it. Hmm. You live and learn the tripod legs that are included with it. Now this is a very good idea, nice little sturdy tripod, good quality, has never let me down. It became a little loose one time, but you can actually fasten up the legs again, so it doesn't flip around. And the handle can come from the bottom position, you can unscrew it, or I've got these great clip, uh, fast clip things, which are brilliant, you must get them if you have one, where you can unclip it from one and put it on the other, very quickly and easy to change where the handle goes, even better, get a second small tripod or a monopod and keep both to use it as a dual handle system. That gives a lot more stability. It also does take away a little bit from having your hand on the controls because you can hold it at the back, the second upright handle, and take most of the weight there and the control while you steady it with the other hand as you guide it along. So I do like the system. The tripod's been quite good. And it does help initially to be able to, for, for a couple of reasons, for balancing the thing, you can flip the tripod out, stand it down, do the balancing. Also, if you're wandering around, uh, like I do a lot of travel videos, I can then put it on the table, on the tripod, and uh, turn the gimbal off and check the settings, and, and it can stand there quite safely. So you can put it down and rest it, quite nice. Overall, the tripod works quite well, and with the clip, quick release clips, 
is really good for transferring between the two, but I would recommend just getting two. Works much better. Batteries. It has two rechargeable batteries that fit nicely into the handle and you can take them out and recharge them separately. So you can buy a couple of spares and swap them out as you need to keep shooting all day. Uh, they're good size batteries. I get six hours reliably out of them, sometimes eight or ten depending on how I'm using them. So two sets of batteries gets me through all day. They do, if you wear them down, they do take for three to four hours to recharge. So at the end of the day, if you're doing a shoot the next day, you do need to get them on to recharge. But I found them very reliable, they've always recharged, and two sets of batteries, i.e. four in total, has got me through the day. One little quirk is undoing the battery on the handle, the cover. It's in the handle, so it actually makes the weight nice and compact in the center. It's not down low, it's right under the camera. But getting the cover off, is, it's got a little technique to it. You have to put your hand on, slide it out, once you get the technique, it's easy, but it can be a bit fiddly at first. But batteries, I would say, good. Quick release plate. Now this nifty system that they designed on the top where the, where the camera sits works very well. It's basically a quick release system that when you first set up your gimbal and mount your camera on it, you can attach the plate to it. When you want to take your camera off, you just push the button, lift it off, and you can then handhold the camera. Then you can come back to the gimbal, Put it on, click it in position, and it's still balanced. So that is actually a very nice system. I've actually uh, mounted my Manfrotto square plate on top of that as well. So again, I can just lift the camera off from there, put it back in again, all balanced, ready to go. So no fiddling about rebalancing each time. The quick release system works very well. Gimbal settings. All the settings are fully adjustable directly from the gimbal. So no need to open up an external app, which is great. But you do need to learn how to adjust everything. So you can do it on the fly and you do need to set up your gimbal beforehand. That takes a bit of time. Once it's done, then it's done. But you can change everything direct from the handle. You can use the app, but we'll come to that shortly. The modes that it does have, it has a POV mode, point of view mode, vortex, Go mode, pan follow, lock, and selfie mode. The app. The play app. Um, okay. It's just, oh, half the time I kind of get to connect, it disconnects. There's some useful features in it, but it is just not worth my time and effort using. I mean, you can control the camera with it if you can get it connected and stay connected. But in general, it's not very intuitive, it's not very user-friendly, disconnects too much. I don't see the point in it, unless they really improve it. And even then, I still don't see the point of it. Conclusion. So, does it do the job? And is it worth getting? Well, if you want a gimbal that is easily portable, easy to use, and can perform well, and is at a reasonable price, then yeah, it's a great choice. Undoubtedly newer versions will come out, hopefully improving on a few things. But if you want smooth video footage now, then yes, I can recommend this. I am still happily using mine and see no reason to change it, unless I want a heavier camera setup that will go over the payload. But for travel photography, it's brilliant. It's portable, can carry a full frame camera, is reliable, batteries last all day. It's great. So to finish off with, here's a short video I made using the Weeble.